Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Dan Warpaint JKU. If you're doing a one ton swap on your JKU and you need rear wheel speed sensors on a corporate 14 bolt, Artec Industries has you hooked up and they make an awesome bracket that bolts right on to the backing plate and provides an awesome place for your wheel speed sensors to be located perfectly to communicate with a tone ring. So let's check out what needs to be done. Now, when it comes to making your ABS and your skid control and all that kind of stuff work on your JK, whether you have an early one or a later one, the way you're gonna wanna do that is with tone rings. Now, if you're using a Super Duty Dana 60, like the one we have here under War Paint or the one we have here under Project Maple Leaf, those come factory if you're gonna use the factory uh, hub bearings which I highly recommend, with a 60 tooth tone ring. Now the factory Jeep runs with a 52. Why does that matter? Let's dive in and talk about it. So this is an example of a tone ring. Um, these little teeth on the tone ring as your hub rotates will pass a wheel speed sensor. Those teeth get picked up by that wheel speed sensor and the computer on a factory Jeep is looking for 52 teeth. So if you put 60 in there, it'll mess up the system. Now it can be reprogrammed quite easily with something like a JScan app on your phone or a lot of other aftermarket tuners. I happen to like and use the JScan, but it is a way to get the computer to basically run thinking that your Jeep has Dana 44s or a Dana 44, Dana 30 underneath it still, even though it is on one ton axles. Now, Artec Industries um, winds up actually selling you the tone rings, and all you have to do is bring your hub for your 14 bolt to a machine shop. They will mill it down just slightly and then press on your new tone rings. Now, Artec Industries also gives you an option to run all four wheel speed sensors, right? One on each tire on the rear axle only. That addresses a lot of issues for people running a front axle that maybe doesn't have tone rings. Uh, they're a little bit harder to, to machine on and put on afterwards. Now it's actually pretty simple. That little bracket that I held up from Artec Industries at the beginning of the video is actually comes in a kit. You can buy two of them and basically it allows your rear wheel speed sensor to basically just fit in and then you have to, you know, bolt it in with the factory bolt that came, that came right off your JK. Um, now, as that gets bolted on, you do need to drill a hole through the backing plate for your emergency brake setup, which we're going to get to for in a second. And you're also going to need to uh, grind down the inside of the brake shoes on the emergency brake to make sure that the uh, tone ring on the hub will actually fit when it comes time to reassemble it. But it's all truly simple. We're gonna get to it. I'll show you how it's done. All right, so this is a new set of brake shoes and I didn't even grind these yet and they are not perfectly round at all. So what I'm gonna do is basically open up these areas that need it a little bit where it's not perfectly round. I'm gonna open it up up here a little bit um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of material off the inside, but that's usually not the problem when it, comes, when it comes to clearing this tone ring. Where the problem is, is usually right up here at the top corner and right down there on the bottom corner. So I'm gonna remove a little bit of material down there as well. And the only way to truly know if you've taken off enough is to test fit it. If it doesn't fit and the tone ring is contacting and you can't get that hub past it when you're on reassembly, you need to take it back apart, open it up a little more, and then put it back together. It's really not that big of a deal. I just hit them with a flap disc and open them up. All right, now with the 
hub ring, right, with your with your tone ring on there. I ground these out. I took away some material here, took away some on all the corners so that it'll hopefully fit right in there. Um, at this point, we need to make sure that we drill a hole through the backing plate, which will allow our wheel speed sensor to get in there. Um, so in order to do that, we're basically going to slide it back onto our axle, mock it up with that sensor bracket from Artec Industries, and basically mark our back plate, take it all back apart, drill it out. And with this bracket, if you put your wheel speed sensor in there, you would be hitting the flange of your axle on your 14 bolt that all this bolts to. So we're going to take a couple of marks in there. We're going to attack it with a flap wheel and basically grind this out so that it kind of looks like this and it's indented. You don't have to go farther than this portion of your backing plate, but you basically want to take this down until it's flush. And there we go. I mean, those those two are uh, are basically touching each other. So we're good there. I'm gonna get a little bit of paint on that so that it doesn't rust. And then I'm, we're gonna start bolting it back together so that we can mark the backing plate for where we have to drill that hole. After marking it, I start at a quarter inch and work my way up to a three quarter inch drill bit. At this point, we're gonna take our hub bearing assembly with the tone ring kind of slide it on and see if it's going to clear all of all of the places that we were curious about on the brakes. Now, if you can see down in there, there's not a ton of room around it, but it looks like it's just going to clear and we should be able to uh, basically put a two by four over the end of it, tap it in, get that through, and everything should work just fine. Guys, that's how you solve the wheel speed sensor issue. Now guys, stay tuned for a future video about how to actually program the Jeep's computer to work. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you the current way to do it on the JScan app. There used to be a different way, they've since changed it. Um, and it works flawlessly if you do it correctly. So I'll show you that once we have the rear axle under this Jeep, but I got a lot more work to do with mocking up those leaf springs first. Um, and your, your, I can attest to it, your dash will not look like a Christmas tree. In fact, your Jeep will still think it has the Dana 44s and factory tires underneath it. Uh, that's how it'll drive, it's gonna be awesome. Um, get out there, go build something. Make sure you check out the links below in this video and don't forget to subscribe.